Sonia from UnrealTech.net, a vision of BlenderTech.com. Let's see if we can finish up all of the functions for our line trace based G36 rifle today. So open your project and remember, create your way. So we finished the event graph, less a couple functions we need to call, and all of the visuals and accuracy functions. And so we just need to do the long and co co convoluted vector math functions for the mechanics. So let's start doing some vector math. So we have here a create confirm hit function. We need that for server notify hit. So let's uh, so let's start with that because it's the biggest one. So we want a confirm hit. So that'll take a uh, not a not a hit information. It'll take a let's see. Um, we're gonna need it. So let's add new. Um, this will be a hit result. So it'll take a hit result and it's gonna confirm that it actually hit something. So uh, we're gonna need that one. That is gonna be a pass by reference value. We're also gonna need our um, vector quantize net, net quantize normal, which is gonna be our shooting direction. And then we need a, that one's also going to be a pass by reference. These are all going to be passed by reference, actually. Um, then we're going to need a integer, which is going to be our random seed. And then we're going to need a float, which is going to be our reticle spread. So much of, much of the inputs we've been using for all of these is reticle spread. And so we are going to need to do some rerouting. I need to set up my key for that because I'm sick of typing in reroute. Ah, I found the issue. I didn't add 411's binary to uh, Logitech Gaming Software. Um, it only had 410. So yeah, we're going to take hit, we're going to reroute that. We're going to take shoot direction, we're going to reroute that. We're going to keep this nice and clean, so let's bring it out a couple uh, blocks here. We want two down. Random seed, let's reroute that. And reticle spread, let's reroute that. So we have all those nice and cleanly reroated. Let's bring them up to there maybe. I don't know somewhere nice and clean but we're gonna need room because we're gonna take our reticle spread yeah we're gonna need more room and we want to do uh, degrees to radian so d2r so I'll get us rads I sh should oh yeah I need to set up here you guys go if you want to see it again um, under editor preferences if you go to keyboard shortcuts and we want full blueprint editor. No, we want graph editor. We can do straighten under S, 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 where are you? Straighten connections above F9. Control shift S is what I've been using. So there we go. We can now straighten things out. Control shift S, control shift S. I think it's working. Maybe not. Keyboard shortcuts, control shift S, straighten connections. Yep, should be. Um, R to D, let's see. There we go, yeah, we're good. Okay, so after that, we wanna get the sign of that. So sign in radians, of course, since we're working in radians now. And then we wanna get the absolute value in case we get a negative value because our spread can't be negative. Um, well, it can be, but it won't be in this instance. So we got all that. Um, then we want to, uh, well, we're gonna need some, a few local variables. So let's do that now. So we need um, a local variable underscore web angle dot. So this is the reticles um, uh, center dot. Um, basically what angle is it at? Um, and then we need a vector. So this is gonna be, well, we're gonna need another, um, let's go local underscore uh, view dot hit direction. So this is gonna be just the, oh, sorry, web angle dot, that'll be the uh, the angle uh, uh, of the reticle spread, how much, and the view dot will be the center. So this will be the, um, this will be the direction in um, degrees, uh, so that'll be a float. And then we need a vector, which will be just the uh, L underscore view direction. So that's just the straight old direction that we are viewing. So that'll just be a regular old vector, zero, zero, zero. So now that we have those, we want to set weapon angle dot uh, to that radical spread value. That'll be the very first thing we do. Let's bring this back here. 
see if we can't squeeze it together. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to rewrote this some more and we're going to want to break our hit result. So let's break it. Let's give room to rewrote everything. We're going to rewrote it way over here. And we're going to need all four. Ooh. And make sure these are all passed by reference values. Um, and then we're going to want to go into a branch and we're going to want to check if our owning pawn. Right, that's from our parent class. I always forget. So get owning pawn. We want to make sure that he's valid. So uh, is valid. Peer. And this is our condition. So that can go into there. And um, we want to make sure that the actor we hit is valid as well. If it's an invalid actor, it's not going to be considered a valid hit. But we also need to make sure it's a valid hit. So we want to do a blocking hit or um, the hit actor is valid. So we have a hit if we hit something that blocks it or if we hit an actor basically and it's a valid actor. So that is our condition right there. It's a little bit messy, but whatever. Um, our location, um, we're going to want to take all the way over and do a uh, minus vector, vector minus vector. And we're going to want to take our um, hit actor and we're going to want to get the display name. So let's scroll it all the way over and let's do get display name as well. All right, so back to here. Um, so we're in our branch, we go to true. So if true, so if this condition becomes true, then we wanna check to see if the hit location is um, basically within uh, uh, a view angle that works with this weapon. For example, um, make sure that the hit isn't um, behind a player instead of in front of them, you know, if someone's trying to cheat or whatever. Um, or it's not like a straight right um, shot, you know, basically make sure the vector math adds up. So what we do is we, um, we, I need some more space here, we get muzzle direction, or location rather, and we're gonna um, take the location Oh, yeah, I went a little far on that. We want to subtract um, the location from, or we want to subtract the location, yeah, the muzzle location from the location, rather. And then we want to normalize. So we just want the, we want the normal of it, whatever direction it's pointing. And then we want to set the view direction to that if this all becomes true. So then we get we get the normal, the view direction of that vector, of the muzzle direction. So we know exactly where the muzzle's pointing. And then we want to get camera aim. So where's the camera looking? And we want to get the dot product. So that we want to get the, um, the dot product of the view direction from the camera aim. I'm gonna bring this down. Let's see if we can fit this in here nicely. Uh, maybe bring this over. And then after that, um, we get a float back as a dot product. Then we can set our view dot hit direction. So we set all our local variables right there. And then what we need to do is we need to go into another branch to verify all this. So how we're going to do that is we're going to take the view dot hit direction. And we're going to make sure it's greater than, not greater or equal than, but greater than the allowed um, view dot hit direction um, minus the weapon and or sorry, the local weapon angle dot. So you have an allowed view dot direction and you have a local variable that we just calculated. And we want to make sure that it's greater than that. Because if it's not, then um, 
we're basically rejecting the hit and what we can do to notify someone that their hit was rejected or for debugging purposes you'd obviously turn that off for a for a cooked game um do a print do a print string rather and we want to um print the log and we want it yeah, that's all fine but um print screen is going to be um, based on a variable. I don't think we have it, so we're going to have to create it because it'll be under debug. Oh yeah, okay. Print rejected client side hits to screen. So if that's true, which it is right now, because we're going to need to debug, that'll be that'll set whether we're printing to screen or not. So we can put that back up. And the string in, we're going to need to build up. So we're, we got the display name of the actor that we did hit, but it is rejected. We also want a reference to self, and we want to get our display name. Not like that. I'm just going to copy this. And then what we can do is we can do an append. So let's do an append. So a, so basically us, our display name, um, rejected um, the client side hit of space, add a pin. So that's what we hit. And then um, we'll put a reason, or maybe we'll put a period reason. Um, angle um, shot angle sh or well, hit angle was too great so greater than um, um, was too great was too great was too was more than <laughs> um, hit direction we'll do that So that'll help us debug if we get any rejected hits. And that prevents cheating as well um, in a fully cooked game. So well, that's what we're doing there. So let's give that a comment. So that comes all the way from, um, from where we normalize and get muzzle location. So that's, yeah, that's the second branch here, basically. So what we're doing is, um, verify the hit location is, um, is, um, within the weapons set view angle, basically. Um, so for our, I, um, the shot wasn't modified from straight or from the shooting direction. Der. Why not? So yeah, that's that. We'll make it just past the second branch. All right. If true, however, then we can go ahead and um, go into another branch because we don't want to be in the idle state if we're hitting something. We'll be in the firing state. Um, but if we're auto reloading, we could be in reload, we could be winding up, we could be winding down. So we just want to make sure we're not in the idle state. So we want to go into a branch. We want to do one more check. You do lots of safety checks when it comes to networking and when it comes to very realistic uh, things. We want to uh, do a not Boolean we want to get current state and check if it's equal to idle. So not equal to idle. It could be anything else though, basically. So it won't have any false. So um, make sure we are not in idle state if hitting something. Um, should be in firing state, but could be others. Close enough. All right, so if that's true, we're gonna need all our rewrotes here again, so let's bring them over. Kind of a mess, but whatever. Let's line them back up. So we're gonna take our um, hit again, and we're gonna break it again. So let's break our hit result again. 
And these guys can continue going on. Probably bring this back. So what we want to check is um, basically if we didn't hit an actor but we still hit something um, so this could be a blocking volume or just part of the world or whatever or something static like a static mesh or whatever there's nothing uh, else to check so we'll confirm the hit um, otherwise if we hit something that's movable so something that say has physics um, um, enabled on it then we need to check to see if our hit location is within a scaled version of that actor's bounding box dictated by our variable client side hit leeway remember we give a little bit of leeway to um, uh, the size of an actor uh, if we hit or not hit it or not and if it isn't within that bounding box we ignore that hit because it's either a laggy shot or it desynchronized from the network replication for some reason um, and so basically we just have to reject that hit so to check that we got some math to do so we first of all we start off with, with the easy stuff we make sure the hit actor is valid uh, or rather not and it's a blocking hit so we checked before if it was a blocking hit and the hit actor is valid, but now we're checking if it's not valid and a blocking hit. And we want to get the hit actor, we want to get its root component, and then we want to get its mobility. We want to check if it's movable. And that's just the default uh, value. So we want to make sure um, it's equal to, or we'll use this twice, um, we want to make sure first of all it's equal to static or equal to stationary. Nothing else. Move, well, the other one is movable, which we'll do next. So we want to make sure its mobility is static or stationary. If it's movable, we have other things to worry about. So it's got to be an OR here. Pretty complex gate. And then an AND goes to an OR, which goes to this OR. So one or the other. And that goes into a branch. So if that comes true, if we're in the idle state, or if we're in a proper state, then we go into this branch with this condition and um, if true then we need another function great um, and it's not a short one either but it's going to take all of these so I'm going to leave these rerouted here and I'm going to re reroute them and we'll do that uh, other function after we finish this one. I'm just going to leave these here for a minute and I'm just going to go if true actually I'm just going to leave a comment here handle confirmed hit. So if we have a confirmed hit that's true here finally we can handle it. Um, if none of this is true and we have a movable object then we got to handle it a different way which we will do um, we also want to take the hit and rewrote it down and across as well because we want to break it so we're going to break it again um, so yeah we can handle the confirmed hit if true if false I don't want to go below it we'll go above Let's rewrote, 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 get back in line here, somewhere around there. Um, then we're going to go into a last branch, and this branch is going to need to be pretty far away because we got a lot of math to do for movable objects. Let's compile and save while we're at it. F7, auto save. All right. You still think it's auto saving? I hope so. Edit. Editor preferences, loading and saving, 
save on compile. Okay, under blueprints editor rather. On success only, perfect. She should be always. All right, so if we hit a moving object, how do we do that? Well, our branch is gonna need a condition. We're gonna need an and condition with three pins. So let's go and, and add a pin. So we are gonna need uh, to check three float values and make sure they are less than. So one, two, th three. And all of these are gonna take an absolute value of a vector. So we're gonna do an abs. And that vector is going to be the hit location vector minus our um, hit actor bounds. So take the hit actor and get actor bounds. And this gives you the bounding box of the actor. If you don't know what a bounding box is, then just look it up, I guess. So we want the origin in this case. Um, so basically the center, the pivot point. And then we want to um, break this vector. And then we get our x, y, and z. We don't want negative numbers. And we want to make sure those are less than um, the box extent. So now we need to do a little bit of math. Multiplied by float. This is where we put in the leeway. Um, vector times float. And we want to get client side hit allowance. Allowance, leeway, whatever you want to call it, forgiveness. I totally hit that player, that should have counted, you know, that kind of thing. We want to break that vector. And we want to get three maxes. We want to get the max, float, we need that, three of those. And then we want to make a literal float. And give it a value of around 10 to 30. I'm going to go right in the middle, 20. And we want to get the max between all of these because our client side allowance is set to 100. So um, if the client side allowance is, um, or sorry, if, if this right here is uh, less than, yeah, basically if the client side allowance is bigger, then um, then we need to uh, handle a confirmed hit. Otherwise, we need to say, sorry, rejected hit. It makes more sense if you draw it out. It's kind of hard to explain. So that's our condition, just like so. And then we need to um, basically do the same thing we did before. So let's just copy and paste that, our whole little print string here. So that's for a rejected hit. So we want to get the hit actor and then print string false. So if they're great, if any of these are greater than, if true though, we need to handle the confirmed hit. So we're going to need these again. So we'll bring them over and we can do that function now. Um, I think that is everything here, yes. So let's just give it a comment first of all. So um, that's this last branch. So um, this is basically an else if statement. Um, we hit a object with mobility equals, is that a double equals? Equals movable. Um, then we check um, our hit location to make sure it's within a scaled version of the actor's bounds, um, which is set by client side hit allowance. If it isn't, we reject the hit. And that's usually due to latency, but it could be just due to desynchronization, which is also latency. 
So yeah, let's compile and save. So to finish this uh, up, we're gonna need our um, handle confirmed hit function, which isn't too bad, but it's long too. So uh, confirm hit, this should most definitely be in a category. So that's gonna be in our mechanics category. So let's do that. And yeah, that should be good. So yeah, let's, uh, we need the same thing. So let's duplicate it. And this will be handle confirmed hit. I'm gonna close all these other tabs here. Handle confirmed hit, all right. Actually, I'm gonna leave confirmed hit open because we're not done it either. So handle confirmed hit, let's delete everything first of all. So yeah, we're gonna take our hit our sh uh, or rather we're gonna take our um, this will be an impact point or no this will be our hit um, then we're gonna need a we're gonna need a shoot direction we're gonna need our uh, random seed or radical spread we're also gonna need a vector which is the origin of the shot origin and that should be a pass by reference value too. Okay, perfect. Should all be diamonds. And these all need to be rerouted re too. So, um, yeah, rerouted them all. Keep everything nice and neat and it will pay off in dividends. And we wanna take our hit and we wanna break it. That's the very first thing we're gonna do. Gonna keep those pins in line <clears throat> and we need a local variable not these ones but we do need a float called L underscore um, damage dealt and by default it'll be zero obviously we don't want to accidentally da deal damage but we want to set it just in case at first to zero um, then we want to go into a sequence and this is gonna have three parts to it so add a pin and we're gonna have to take all of these and rewrote them. So we're gonna need them right away. It's the biggest part that I don't like about blueprinting is just organizing all the wires into something meaningful. It's almost like writing organized code though, I guess. Um, so the first thing we're gonna need to do is handle um, applying damage to the actor that was shot. So we're gonna go into a branch. And that condition is gonna be, um, we already have this over here, I think, should deal damage. And the actor in is gonna be the hit actor. So should we deal damage to this hit actor? Let's see, what's the cleanest way to do this? So that'll be the condition. If true, then we deal damage, which we don't have. So we're gonna need that one as well. So, you know what, let's, uh, let's duplicate this while we're still very early on and let's go deal damage. Because we're gonna need um, pass by reference hit, pass by reference sh vector, shooter so let's get rid of this shooter random seed radical spread and let's call it origin shooter and then we need to output a float which is going to be damage death death <laughs> dealt uh, except I did that in the totally wrong one god open up deal damage rather and get rid of those and origin to shoot direction and output a float called damage dealt and it has a local variable called l damage and then we can get rid of all this crap so we don't confuse them again And it looks like I crashed the engine, or not, okay, weird. 
Oh, I got rid of my local variable. That's kind of not nice. L damage. I mean, it's kind of smart to get rid of local variables if you don't need them, but what if I'm using it later? Anyways, okay, there we go. So back to handle confirmed hit. Let's compile and save. So, um, yeah, we'll call deal damage. And then we'll set um, dealt damage to damage dealt, which should be the output here. I forgot to add that. So damage, damage dealt. So let's compile. So let, and then we can plug that in there. All right, and since it needs a pass by reference, it's going to give you ears. So let's give it a pass by reference by plugging that in. And the shoot direction comes from our vector. Quantize net normal. As you can see, those can plug right in. And if we compile, it should give us no ear. Perfect. All right, cool. So um, those ones actually can stay there. These need to come back we need to use them so we got some math to do so we um handles um applying damage to the actor that got hit then we replicate that hit the clients if we're the server so we do a switch off so let's do a switch off so if we have the authority if we're the server then we take uh, hit notify here and we set members and we're gonna write well first plug in authority right click restore all structure pins and now we plug and play we got our origin pass by reference goes into origin um, we got our reticle spread and we got our random seed and damage dealt is L damage dealt Sounds like Mexican L damage delta. And the hit point comes from our impact point from our hit result, which is going to need to be rerouted down because we're going to use it again. So let's straighten that connection out and bring it over here somewhere. Let's line it up with those pins or something, maybe. I don't know. Because um, we're going to use it. Actually, let's bring it back. So we're going to use it down here when we do another check um, for all the effects. So that is good right there. So replicate um, the hit to all clients, to all clients if we are the server. And then lastly, we play weapon fire effects if we aren't a dedicated server. So we need to go into a branch and we need to check um, the condition um, is dedicated server. And if false, then we spawn tracer effects. with the endpoint not being directly plugged in. Um, and then we spawn impact effects with the hit in is going to have to come from all the way up here. So we are going to need, um, shoot, we're going to need all of these actually, I think. Yes. Let's double click there and let's reroute all these down. So there is our hit. There is our net quantize vector normal. Try to remember the order. Random seed. Radical spread. And origin. So what we need to do is we need to select a vector for the endpoint here so let's do a select vector 
So A is just going to be the simple hit location or uh, impact point rather, whatever you want to call it. Um, B pick A is going to be based on if the actor is valid. So we take hit actor, oh I shouldn't deal damage, um, we can bring it down here, is valid. That is B pick A, and B is going to be um, a little bit complicated, so let's bring this down. So B is going to be a vector plus vector, and we are going to add, um, it should be our origin, so that should be the yellow one here, plus a vector times our range, so times float, vector times float. So let's get range for the float, and the vector is our net quantized normal. So I think it's that one. Yeah, vector net quantized normal structure by reference. Perfect, it's a little bit messy, but whatever. And then our hit is gonna go into our spawn impact effects, right there. All right, I like that, perfect. And then we're gonna break it again. Just keep things clean, because now we wanna show a hit marker if we hit another player on our HUD. So go into a branch. We're gonna want an and Boolean. And if you don't want hit markers on your HUD, then you can ignore this completely. Well, probably ignore it. Um, so we want to get owning pawn. Let's just bring this way out. We got room to work. We want to get owning pawn. Make sure he's local controlled, as always. And we want to get casted controller, our helper function. And we want to get the controller's HUD, get HUD. Then we want to cast a BP HUD up here, cast, and we want to take the hit actor and cast to BP player, or rather, not the player control, the base character, and we want to make sure that he's not dead. So get BR dead and do a not boolean. So only if this is true, we go into another branch and make sure that we are not dead. And so um, make sure that successfully casted. Um, make sure this successfully casted rather is the last one. Make sure this successfully casted and make sure the owning pawn is locally controlled. And if all that is true and the character the player is not dead and then we notify hit on bp hud notify hit yeah we still haven't dealt with out of ammo and everything yet lots of stuff to do all right so i believe that does it so we're gonna take all, whoa, we're gonna take all this from the first branch there. Oops, not there. Compile, or compile comment, and we're gonna say, um, spawn weapon FX if we are not a dedicated server. And then this part here, If we hit another player, show hit marker. That's kind of an annoying place for it to be. Oh, I hate when you can't resize them inside. Thought they fixed that. Hmm. 
All right, good enough, whatever. So let's compile and save that. And we need, I guess we can plug that into confirm hit now and get rid of that. So let's go to confirm hit. And we need to plug it in two places. We need to plug it in at the end. So that'll be here. So confirm hit. Our handle confirmed hit rather, my bad. So our hit is gonna be the hit structure. Shoot direction, random seed, radical spread, and the origin comes from get muzzle location. So that's where the shot, the trace spawns from. Then we come back and we do it here too. So if true, we handle confirmed hit. And do the same thing. Plug in the hit, plug in the vector, plug in the random seed, plug in the radical spread and the origin. Get muzzle location. Let's see, where can we put that, I guess. I'll bring it down, it looks nicer that way. F7, compile and save. Confirm hit is done. Handle confirmed hit is done, I believe. I don't think I missed anything. So now just deal damage and that, sh other than perform line traces, that is it. And this one is, eh, they're all kind of not fun. All right, so first thing we want to do is uh, break our hit result. And we want to reroute our shooting direction below that. Kind of make a fork like that. And we're going to take the hit component and reroute it above the second thing in the fork. And the hit bone name. Put that in the middle. Let's do some rerouting here. Um, what else? We're gonna need... Um, we got our damage. Um, we're gonna need the hit rerouted. So let's bring it something like that and over. Let's do something like that for now. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to take our hit actor and cast to cast to BPI. Ooh, we don't override. We don't have that created yet. And we also don't have that. Actually, we don't need that implemented. Um so we need to go into our interfaces general and we need to create a blueprint blueprint interface bpi um override damage let's open it up let's create the one function we need which is modify damage this one we can create real quick uh we need an instigator instigator and that will be a controller reference. We need a damage causer. Because you've seen this all before on the damage things. Um, and that'll be an actor reference. We need a hit, which will be a hit result. We need base damage, which will be a float. We need a damage direction, which will be a vector. We need damage type, which will be damage type, not our base damage type, regular damage type class. And that'll be damage type, because this is working with the stock um, damage system in Unreal. And then we'll do a float, because remember with interfaces, you can override all this. So, um, Hence, um, override damage. This will be um, damage dealt. So let's compile and save that. So now we can go into, let's compile our uh, class here. So we can go uh, hit actor. We want to cast to BPI 
Oh, you're gonna be a bugger, aren't you? Um, how am I gonna do this? Let's see, cast to BPI, um, override damage, and just plug it in, I guess. I guess it doesn't like peer cast because it should be in peer. So just like that. So the actor gets overridden to that. And um, if the cast fails, we set um, L damage to get hit damage. So just basic damage. And then um, we're going to rewrote. Whoops, not return. We're going to, whoa, we're going to rewrote that. And then we're going to apply point damage. We're going to fill all those things in later because we need to modify damage first. So let's go back. That's the failed cast. Um, and we're going to want to get a reference to self. We're going to want to get owning pawn and get controller since we're going to modify damage. So I just want the basic controller. So as the BPI uh, override damage, we want to call modify damage. Um, as an interface call. So the instigator is going to be this guy. The damage causer is going to be self, the gun. Um, bring these back. Up. We're going to need to rewrote these. They're going to need to be rewroted with this hit structure. Um, the hit just plugs right in. Let's bring it all the way over with its brothers and sisters. Um, base damage is going to be hit damage. So, whoops. Let's just do that up here. Get hit damage. Damage direction is going to come from that rewrote we made right here and damage type is going to come from get damage type all right and we're actually going to use that twice so let's bring it down here um this should be a lot lower just so it's kind of out of the way All right, so after we modify the damage, then we set L damage to damage dealt. And then we apply point damage as well. And put that right in the middle. And the damage actor is going to be the hit actor. Let's see if we can make that straight. The base damage is going to be L damage, local damage variable. The hit from direction is going to be um, that same reroute. So let's do that and let's bring it up, straighten everything out. We'll probably bring it over too, I guess. Something like that. Um, hit info is going to come from our hit structure so that one oops so let's rewrote this down so it's nice and clean something like that maybe uh, the event instigator is going to be our controller reference which is that one and let's rewrote that guy Not exactly clean, but what can you do? Not a lot, I guess. Yeah. 
Oh, they're crossed, aren't they? Yeah. Oh, well. Um, the damage causer is going to be um, ourselves. Could just get a reference to self. Uh, whatever. Let's do that real quick. Try to keep everything in line. You never know when you need it again. And damage type is going to be damage type. Let's just do that. Damage type class, rather. Let's bring this down, straighten it out. There we go. That ain't so bad. Let's reroute this guy. Give him his room. There, we'll leave it there. Or good enough. All right. So after we apply point damage, um, we're gonna need all our reroutes here. So let's copy and paste and connect them together. Straighten them out. So we're gonna need um, this one, the primitive component reference, and we wanna get its mobility, so get mobility. I wanna make sure it's equal to movable. So that'll go into a branch, obviously, because we have a boolean. back a little bit and um, let's do false first so we want to take the or we want to yeah let's rewrote this again these can come a little bit further let's rewrote this guy again and then we want to um, check is simulating physics. And the bone name is gonna be the bone name here. So is simulating physics. And then we wanna take this vector and multiply it by a float. I wanna multiply it by impact force. I see it down there, but whatever. Which we gave a base value of 2,800 meters per second. And then we want to take that vector and rewrote it because we are going to go into a branch. So if it is equal to movable, um, if true, and it's simulating physics, because we'll have a false condition, if true, then we want to add impulse. We want to, we want to move that thing because we shot it with a big darn gun. Or maybe a little gun, depending what you set up. So add impulse. Target is primitive component. So just turn off context sensitive. And so the target will be the primitive component. Like so. So let's reroute this again. And the bone name will be the bone name. Reroute that. And no velocity change. And the impulse will be the impact force times the um, the original shot direction. So we add impulse. If false, we're going to go into a execution chain. So let's rewrote that. And this also brings in this other false. Let's see, how does that look? Eh, not that great. Neither does that. Oh, well. We do it above too, I guess, um, because now we can finally return. Told you that one wasn't too bad. And what do we return? Our local variable L damage. L damage. -o. All right, I think I got that right. I hope so. So let's compile and save. And did we need that somewhere? I can't even remember now. I don't think so. Oh yeah, we needed it in our handle confirmed. Hit, I closed it too early. Oh, right, we already set that in there. That's, that's right. All right, so there's that. And then I believe one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. We just have one more to do, perform line traces. And this one's actually quite short. So let's create, let's just uh, 
What's the shortest one? Oh, handle confirmed. Hit has to go in here too. Good thing we I accidentally opened that. Process instant hit. So we want to handle confirmed hit. And we want to plug our hit in, our vector in, our origin, our random, our radical spread, and there we have it. And get rid of our big red sign now. So I'll make sure no other has needed them. Looks like we're good. Yeah, I think we're all right. All right, so we need, let's uh, just duplicate du deal damage and we will need perform line traces. Perform line traces. So let's open that up. And we've got to adjust some things because it has no inputs and outputs. So just delete them. And get rid of that return node and delete everything. All right. So first we need to create, um, or we want to wanna do a for loop. Let's do a for loop. First index is zero. Last index is get get raise per shot minus one since it's zero based. Turn on context sensitive again, I guess. Minus one, that'll be the last index. So this is where we um figure out where our bullets are going basically since they're instant hits since we're not doing ballistics so we're going to need to get camera aim and we want to get get fire Ooh, we're going to need a yeah we're going to need some functions on our base class um we're going to want to get adjusted spread multiply that by 0.5 have it and then we want degrees to radians so d d to r and we want to get a random integer maximum value of 200,000 or so 200 or 2 million rather because actually it could be like two, one, whatever the heck it is. I can't remember the highest value of integers offhand. I should though. And we want to make a random stream. And we want to take that and we want to do a cone. Remember our little helper macro, a random unit vector from stream in cone. And the direction is going to be the get camera aim, horizontal half angle, and vertical is going to be our D2R little bit here. And we want to take this random integer because we're going to need it again too, so just reroute it all the way over. Uh, yeah, before we do anything crazy, let's see, we're going to need to do a weapon trace up here. But we're gonna need some stuff for that. It is a weapon fire trace. Um, the end location we can we can do that. So that is a vector plus a vector. And the second one um, will be a vector times a float. And that vector will be the out vector here in the cone times range so get range and we also want to take this out vector and this is going to go in the shoot direction for process instant hit oh it went in the origin i knew that would happen shoot direction so those come after that and the hit from here goes into the reference value hit and the radical spread 
is get adjusted spread. And the random seed comes from down there. And the origin, we can't do that yet. Um, and then lastly, we set current spread and that's the end of the function. Set current spread. And to do that, we want to get the minimum value. So do min, float min that is, of uh, spread increase maximum um, from current spread plus how much spread increase each whoa, shot has, depending on what you set it for the weapon. We'll play with that to do show you how all this stuff works in the end. Uh, spread increase on fire. So how much do the reticles move per shot, basically? That will be how we define the current spread, which, as you might recall, gets put into a lot of functions. But before we can do this weapon trace here and all these other vectors, we need to make one more function, and it's not a terrible one actually, so I'm going to knock it out here real quick. So let's compile, let's go to our parent class, BP uh, weapon base, let's create a function, this is going to be peer, um, it's going to be in mechanics. Um, and it has a vector in and a vector out. So we'll just add, come on, come on, vector. So we'll have, um, aim direction and start location. And this function is going to be called, I totally forgot to call it something. New functions there, that's what we're gonna call it. It's gonna be called get weapon fire start trace dir. So whenever we create a weapon and it needs a trace, this is how we get the start direction. And we're gonna need a local variable, which is gonna be our oh, start location that we return. So create a local variable, L underscore um, start lock which is going to be a vector. And actually, I want to change this to be start lock too, because I prefer shorter. So first we're going to do is we're going to zero that out. So we're going to set it. And then we're going to take, um, we're going to do a two and sequence. We're going to check two things. We're going to take owning pawn. We're going to make sure um, is third is third person is car in third person that's one or rather no that's going to be later that comes into a branch so if true we go into a branch which has that as a condition um we do our regular is valid for the first one And we also want to get casted controller and make sure um, the controller out is valid. Something like that. Um, all right. And if this is false, and if this is false, they're going to go together. And in that case, um, or no, sorry. If, if that is false, we just go straight to the return node. And we just return whatever location we have. If this one's false, then we set it. Actually, we set it both true and false, of course. Um, we set this one to get muzzle location. Of course, under normal circumstances, all weapon traces are gonna start from the muzzle location. Um, if false, however, we need to figure it out. 
we figure that out by doing third person. Um, we also want to take it and we want to get I location. And we want to get, oh, sorry, from the controller, we want to get viewpoint. Thank God we've made all those functions because they come in useful. So we can do some vector math and we can take our aim direction and we can multiply it by a float. And that float is going to be the dot product of two vectors, which is going to be the I location minus the viewpoint. So vector minus vector, I location minus the view location. And it'll be that um, minus the aim direction. So that dot product goes into this multiplication of the aim direction by its own dot product of all that other stuff. And then that goes into a vector plus vector. And then we add the get viewpoint. And that finally becomes our local variable start location. And then we can return. So that's our pure function right there. Compile. Oh, that's bad. That is bad. We are totally going to have to... Well, you guys saw that. I'll just redo it on my own time. That totally sucks. Um, hopefully it saved some of it. We can at least finish our, our instant RG36. Oh, I hate that. That's what you get for using preview releases. Of course, now it's all bugged out. Ouch. Yeah, I have to do that all over. So I'm just going to create it really quick here. Um, get weapon fire start trace location. I'm just going to make it peer. I'm going to put input and output. I'm going to put under mechanics. Actually, I want to leave it in default and I'm going to call it not done not done in case I forget to do it for next time or when we need it because we'll be testing our weapon next time so vector in vector out I'm gonna even leave the well I'll call the parameters aim dirt that sucks big time start lock local variable L start lock vector it's peer all right save first then compile I gotta figure out what's wrong with that class so I will get back to you guys on that next time so we will see you guys next time thanks again for watching if you learned something please like the video and subscribe as well we take donations at paypal.me slash blender tech we do uh, private tutoring you can see that at unrealtech.net and blendertech.com in many many applications if you dislike this video please tell us why so we'll see you next time we'll finish up that last function real quick and remember create your way